Hey, what up? This is Re here. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate everyone. Thank you so much for liking and subscribing. It really helps me a lot. And for checking out my website, paradoxastrology.com. I am a professional astrologer and occultist, and I can help you with anything. Also, if you like the videos that I make, consider subscribing to my Patreon because I put exclusive videos on Patreon which don't end up on YouTube. I recently came across this clip by Alan Watt and it perfectly describes the music industry. Now, some of you know, not a lot of you know, because I don't really talk about myself on this channel. I prefer to talk about topics than talk about myself, but some of you have asked and well, I come from the music industry. I was a rapper. I'm also classically trained in piano and I went to school for music production so that's why I'm able to edit videos and everything like that. I've always wanted to be a rapper. Rap comes very easily to me. This is probably why I'm good at doing mantras because I was able to freestyle. I was assigned to Sony. I did my own tour. I had actually three distribution deals I've worked with top producers, Grammy Award winning, all my tracks are produced by Grammy Award winner. And I'm just telling you this not to brag, okay? Because everything I'm telling you is absolutely meaningless. When I found that out, I left the music industry. And there were so many signs and so many things that I saw that in hindsight, I could have understood this and it saved myself a lot of headache if my eyes were open. But I was in Rahu Dasha. And when you're in Rahu Dasha, you don't see the truth because you're working with your ego. According to sidereal time in January 2021 is when I entered Jupiter and that's when I woke up and I saw that my whole life was a lie. So I'm telling you this because I come from experience in the music industry. I've met very top people who broke down the industry to me. But just like everybody else, when you're confronted with the truth, you somehow think that you could be that one person that it won't happen to. Or you can infiltrate the industry and, oh, I'll still make it, but I'll be that one person. Relay the truth to everybody else. It doesn't work that way. But everybody has those intentions and it's dissociation because we don't want to admit we've been lied to. Now... That's why I make videos and I talk about the music industry because it's very important that people understand what this really is. And I get a lot of pushback for that because this is the one thing people don't want to let go. When you see that everything is a lie, you're going to have to make changes in your life. And music is very hard for people to give up. Music has been programming us since birth. And this clip really emphasizes what I've been talking about. And the music industry is run by secret societies. Me being naive, I didn't realize until in hindsight that my manager, who was Alpha Phi Alpha, which is a same fraternity that Martin Luther King was from. There are many fraternities that you can enter so you can enter the industry. And you have to be a part of certain groups. And people are promoted who are a part of these groups and who are a part of these families. And I could go off about that. I'll make a whole separate video if people are interested about that. The reason for this video is because there's so many frequencies and sounds within the music and it's being used to program you. And a lot of people don't want to believe this, that sound can do this. But that's why I make videos about mantras, how sound affects your chakras. It affects your brain, right? So if mantras can do that, think about what the music is doing. Thinking about how an, a dark occultist would think, how they can use sound to program you. And this is being done all the time. Now, Alan Watt, he was a truth seeker. He would put out the truth. And he died in 2021. I'm not sure of why, but he was Canadian. He had a radio show. And so this is a caller who called in on his radio show. I'm going to talk in between the clips because I don't know if it's copywritten or not. So I don't want to make this video and then have it taken down. So I'm going to talk in between. He perfectly describes how this is done. And I'll describe my experience as well. Okay, so let's get into it. I wanted to know on the music side of things, because I'm in the music industry, and I see on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, how, how dumbed down uh, the masses of young people are and they're being indoctrinated on a daily basis. But I want to know on the production end, how much, in terms of the producers knowing what they're doing with the sounds and, you know, the tones and, and, and you know, where the music's going, how much do they know about what they're doing? Or are they just thinking that they're 
they get the call from someone above them that says, this is what we're looking for, yep. do this, or are they, some of them, either initiated in the whole game and knowing what, you know, what the, what the mission is, or how does yeah. it work? Uh, the higher ones, the ones in the, the bigger companies certainly, certainly do, absolutely, I've met them, and I've worked with some of them, and uh, the trick was always for me to try and get messages out in songs and so on that, that still were popular but bypassed the, the political correctness that was getting pushed in different directions. But yet the ones higher up um, are all experienced in the sciences of sound and the manipulation of the human mind of particular types of sound, uh, the effects, the emotional effects it has on people and, and also the words, the combination of words uh, which can have a, almost a magic impact on young people who parrot generally the choruses uh, and they vaguely understand or remember consciously the, some of the, the main verses, but uh, the subconscious plea listens carefully and retains the, these subliminal, you might say, the almost in the background uh, verses. Okay, right there, I'm going to give you an example because my producer found me out of nowhere, okay? Him being a Grammy Award winner, he wasn't at the top. So there's only a few people at the top. Everyone thinks that because someone has a Grammy that they're part of this agenda or whatever. They could be and not know it. And like he's saying, so for example, we had to do a track. I think this was in 2013. We had an opportunity to do a track for Sprite. Okay. And we had to write it in a certain way to appeal to children. And this was one of the big red flags for me because at that time I've already became vegan. I didn't drink pop. I didn't drink anything. So then now it's like, I have to literally make a song to appeal to children to drink this poison. And that was a very big moral dilemma. But then my ego overtook that and was like, no, this is the only opportunity we'll ever get to do this. And, and we did it. And weirdly enough, our track got picked that year. And we were going to get a lot of money to it. I think it was like a hundred thousand dollars at least or something for this track. But at that time, then they wanted to do a campaign with LeBron. Like LeBron came up and then they were able to do that. So they totally scrapped it. And then we had to rewrite it so many times because they would say, no, we need it more like this or we need it more like this. So he would come back and then uh, have all these edits and then I'd have to re-record it and stuff like that. Like I would write the track with him and then he would edit it. So that is 100% correct. But you think in your mind, I'm being trained by someone who knows how to write tracks. So you're just thinking, oh, okay, like this is actually how you write tracks. So in your small brain, in your brain that doesn't understand, it makes sense is what I'm saying. Okay, let's keep going. And uh, they act upon it, they actually act upon it, programs them to act out. And they start to change their speech, they'll, they'll copy their old words, the new, ne neologisms they call it, or new words. They start to mimic them, they don't know where it came from. That part right there is super important because your subconscious mind can retain these things. This is why we can do mantras in Sanskrit not knowing what it means and it will attune us because all you're doing is tuning yourself to a frequency. So the words actually are just frequencies. Progression, anything. And so yeah, it's, it's, uh, they had meetings in 1904 on this very topic, international meetings. Yeah, what he said 1904 so this has been happening long before that understand a rapper is a mc is a master of ceremony what is the ceremony it's an occult ceremony on the use of music and one guy from new york who was experimenting with a new type what became really jazz not dixieland jazz but the more as yeah, of um, discordant type jazz and he was kidnapped eventually after the, the Russian Revolution and taken over there because they, the Russians understood the significance of music on the minds of the youth. And, and uh, they worked heavily on this. They came up with the Beatnik era. That was a communist invention. They, they would uh, associate a particular uh, dress code, a type of music, and the use of marijuana for the West and use this kind of um, discordant music which put you into almost a hypnotic state. Nothing really mattered. Anything would go. And, but it, and it took off really well in Europe. It didn't quite make it for the US and Canada. So they had to go back and uh, revamp it and turn out pop music. Um, now guys like Martin that worked with the Beatles, 
was really a scientist in acoustics and, uh, and, the, and how it manipulated the mind. He listened carefully to the, the types of arrangements and so on that were done in that early music. Um, it was definitely done not by backstreet musicians or street chord wonders, but, but by people who really knew their, their stuff and how to get particular types of emotions attached to the words that they were putting out. Number one thing that you learn about songwriting is that you have to convey an emotion. And that makes sense when you're writing a song because you want people to feel the song. My producer would always tell me that. You want them to feel it, that the best songs have feeling, right? So you don't think that what you're doing is manipulation to a certain extent. Right, because when you have an emotive attachment to the wording itself, it imprints itself on the mind, the brain. Right. And you will never forget it. It will, it will affect your personality, in fact. Yeah. The majority of people get their personality from the music they listen to. They get their vocabulary. They get their dress. They get the way they act, the way they talk. Everything comes from their music. It isn't an authentic personality. The aggressiveness in the music and the whole idea of it's about me, not about you. I could care less about community. And it's like all those elements that you talk about, you know, with family being broken down, you know, man and woman, it, it isolates the, chi the child so that the music becomes a friend almost. That's right, it's a friend. Yeah. And, and what, it, what it does too, and this was uh, talked about a long time ago when they discussed the, they called it the sequencing of music trends, uh, where they would come out with pop and rock. Like in all Masonic terms, then heavy metal, like right. going after a sword, you know, that's what it, it right. refers to. And, and on it went right down to rap, rap, rap things up, and the judge, of course, and the Masons hit the gavel, and it right. starts the session. Right. And so these are all Masonic terms for a sequence. And during the late 80s, when they were creating massive unemployment, they wanted a nihilistic uh, generation, so they came out with the, basically what was before they gave the word metrosexual male, suddenly all the groups were metrosexual. It has wailing music, sort of lost music, which was um, very depressing. It was meant to put them in a state of depression. It's done on purpose so that we have division and we can't relate to each other. So if the children can't relate to the parents, then they're going to look for another parent figure. And then that could end up being the government, the celebrity, the stars, looking to the wrong stars when you're supposed to look to the stars within. So... This is just an example of how the music industry works, but everything in our world works like this. We're living in a false illusion. And the more you wake up to that, you're going to let go of these things. A lot of people don't want to let go of these things because they're going to have to face a reality they're not willing to face yet. And I understand and I sympathize with that. But I had artists looking up to me when I was making it and i was telling them they could make it too, make it it's a, that's not really making it i'm saying it with air quotes but i was bringing them into the illusion so what i have to do now is tell people how that's fake and i can't keep this going for another generation someone's gonna have to speak up because people are still asking me to be in the music industry and offering me deals and I have to put a line in the sand and be very clear about where I stand and that I'm here to break that illusion so that the next generation doesn't have to go through this again. I probably won't be that successful with it, but if I can help one person, that's all that matters to me. So thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate everyone and I'll see you in the next one.